In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace, the love of God, the friendship of the Holy Spirit, the love, the friendship of Jesus, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. The Lord invites us to come to him, and the living God will give us rest. Anybody tired of this COVID and being socially distancing? The Lord Jesus, we ask for God's own peace in the midst of our struggles and difficulties as we call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, who came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to life, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. of your Son has raised a fallen world. Fill your people with holy joy. For those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, 
on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall he the warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you... But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
more. What is the word that is living? It is brought to us through God's Son, Jesus Christ. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for all of you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For I meant my yoke is easy, my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. How do you like my new mask? <laughs> I've had to wear this one for quite a while. If you leave St. Patrick's Cathedral by the front door on Fifth Avenue, you can't help but be jolted by the figure greeting you as you leave. It's Atlas. Mammoth four-story statue of that Greek titan. He's cast in bronze, his arms spread wide as he carries the universe on his back. He was created by the artist Lou Laurie back in 1937, the year my dad graduated from Avalon High School. It's the largest sculpture in Rockefeller Center. It's bigger even than Prometheus down by the skating rink. The Atlas statue aroused so much controversy when it was unveiled, with some people complaining that the face on that statue looked like the Italian dictator Mussolini. Whoever he resembles, the Atlas that we meet as we leave the cathedral makes a powerful statement. As we pass through those massive doors, we leave the house of God and return to the world of gods with a small g, the gods of our deadlines, the gods of our headaches. And Atlas, as we walk out of church, welcomes us back. Welcome back, Atlas says, to everything you've been praying about. Welcome back to the invoices that are overdue. Welcome back to the long lines in Giant Eagle or wherever you shop. Welcome back to the air conditioning that doesn't work. Welcome back to this COVID-19. Uh, welcome back to the accident that's going to delay us on the way home. Welcome to back to the things that we just can't afford. Welcome back to the things that we, we would desire but just can't have. Well, I don't think there's any desiring for, maybe there still is, pirate tickets, stealer tickets, penguin tickets. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be seeing those guys in a while. In other words, welcome back to the world with all of the burdens and the weight of that world that everyone, we all carry some weight on our backs. But in today's gospel, Jesus offers us help with a capital H, help help, help. Take my yoke and learn from me. I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden 
is light. What a relief. The living God gives us relief. Jesus wasn't talking about the misery of driving on our roads during rush hour traffic or the headaches of our modern life, particularly these last number of months. He wasn't specifically talking about all of the regulations that the Pharisees had laid down for the Jewish people. There were more than 600 in all. Rules that to a lot of the Jews at the time must have felt like it was the weight of the world. Jesus offers us another way. Later in Matthew's Gospel, he would make it clear that you don't need hundreds of regulations, but really just two commandments, to love God and to love our neighbor. It sounds so simple, and that does lighten the load, but it doesn't completely remove the yoke. For when you think about what it means to love God and to love neighbor, especially your neighbor and mine, well, we can feel our soul, shoulders starting to sag a little bit. We're not Atlas. Yet what Jesus offers is not meant as an imposition. Love is never an imposition. Love is a choice that we make. Love is a gift that we give. There from the very depths of our heart, our souls, is where the strength we find to carry that yoke, that burden. That is trusting God, God, who makes all things possible. And he will make it possible for us to bear the burdens that we have to bear in these last months and in the coming months. And if we do, the Lord Jesus, who's meek and humble of heart, this Jesus assures us that he will give us the most blessed of all gifts, that is, his rest, his peace, his comfort. St. Augustine, 1,500 years, put it so beautifully in his favorite prayer, that is, our hearts are restless till they rest in you. It's only in the Lord Jesus, and our eyes have to be focused on him, it's only in him that we find rest and comfort for our souls. Not only rest, but reassurance, peace, again, God's own beloved rest. And so today's scriptures, which our Deacon Mike read so well, uh, reminds us that it's just not found by attracting ourselves or attaching ourselves to the world with all of the things that weigh us down. St. Paul tells us if we live according to the flesh, we will die. But if we live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, and he tells us that we'll live. Don't fall prey, then, to the problems that plagued ancient Rome or modern life. The kinds of things that the great statue of Atlas sees happening around his feet every day. And people fall in and fall out of St. Patrick's Cathedral to pray about those issues and to seek forgiveness for the heavy yokes that they have to bear and that we have to bear. Take instead the yoke of the Lord Jesus, the burden of love. So as I move towards conclusion, Christ is our rest. Anybody here need some of that rest? Christ is our strength. Anyone here need God's strength? Christ is the one who helps us when we feel like we're carrying the weight of the world on our own shoulders. As Catholics, then, Jesus Christ gives us direction, guidance, and surety. Jesus Christ leads us home. Remember that the next time the worries and the weight of the world just seem to be too much, that Jesus Christ is ready, meek and humble of heart, to lead us where we belong. And it won't be as hard as we may fear, for his yoke is easy and his burden, his burden is light.
I believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, to God from true God, begotten, not made, not substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has been through the prophets. I believe. I confess and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We are all poor, and the Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the entire church to bear the burdens of others with them, just as Jesus promises to do for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil authorities throughout the world to govern, respecting the dignity and value of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we celebrate our freedom, that we embrace all with the same freedoms, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of life in all forms at all stages, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families to help each other in their walks of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, particularly those affected by the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died to share the glory of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Laverne Marie Argento, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The great doctor of the church, Teresa of Avila, this is a little prayer that was in her prayer book. Let nothing disturb you, nothing frighten you, all things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to her or him who possesses God. God alone suffices. Father, hear all our prayers, for we make them as a people of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be Together we pray that my sacrifice and yours 
will be acceptable to God, God, our Father Almighty. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring your conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an eternal sharing in the Paschal mystery. Overcome with Paschal joy, we sing the hymn of your glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, you're the font of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray. Send down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body, the blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. For at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and again giving you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Yeah. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this saving chalice, giving thanks, that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with the clergy, with all your people. And remember, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostle St. Susanna, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. want to bring peace and rest into your life, forgive everyone. Forgive everyone. Even those who are meant to be nasty, mean, sinful, unlawful. As best you can, forgive everyone. Um, if it needs where people need to go to jail, well then they still go to jail. But then we become free as we walk out. Free forgive God, forgive others, and forgive yourself, and go to the great sacrament of confession, reconciliation. It's just magnificent. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and grant us the peace, the unity of the kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now from a distance, let us offer another sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Distribution of communion will take place at this Mass at the conclusion of Mass. For those who are watching the live stream at home, there will be distribution of communion in the parking lot following, in St. Susanna's parking lot. But for those who are unable to be here or be with us today, uh, let's join in a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that having been replenished but with such great gifts, that we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go now and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.